What's going on everybody? It's your favorite YouTuber, Austin Holloman, and we are still in Manaus, but we are wrapping up the trip here in Manaus, and now that I'm here, I can go back and reflect and tell you guys exactly how I felt and feel currently being in this city um, for the two weeks that I was here. Now, uh, whenever I came from, to Manaus, I came from Sao Paulo, which is a completely different environment. The people are way colder there. Uh, the culture is way more work, work, work is 10 times as many people there as it is here. There's a lot more stuff to do in Sao Paulo than it is Manaus. So at first I was like, oh, Manaus is so boring. It's so boring. But I've been here two weeks and after about a week or 10 days, you, you'll start to get accustomed. You'll start to just fit in. And now it's like, oh, you know, I'm in Manaus. It's boring. Yes, yeah, there's still nothing to do, but it's not where I'm going to complain about it anymore because I'm pretty much just used to it at this point, right? Now I could probably stay here long term. And I've now that I've established my routine and I've figured out how it, I've adjusted the way how people do things here, it's not as bad as it was at first. Because at first I was like, man, if I don't do this, if I did not do that Amazon rainforest tour, I wouldn't have liked it at all. Which I still think, yeah, I, it was absolutely ne necessary for me to do that. If I didn't do that, I would have missed out on way too much. If you guys come to Manaus, you have to go see the Amazon rainforest. Otherwise, you missed the entire, like, yes, they have a lot of other things like women and hot weather out here. But that rainforest is the beauty of being in the Amazon. You have to go see the rainforest. You cannot come here without seeing the rainforest. After doing it, I'm telling you guys that. Now, I'm in an Airbnb. Uh, the Airbnbs are nothing like Sao Paulo. These are way more. This is not a rundown Airbnb, but it's very South America, meaning like if you guys look at it, it looks like somewhere that you would only see in South America in the middle of the jungle. Uh, the bedroom that I had when I the first thing I thought when I walked in was like, oh, that looks like <laughs> a, a bed from an adult video. You know, it looks like one of those scenes from something that people would jack off to in high school. That's literally it. So if you guys know what I'm talking about. That's what it looks like, right? It's very, everything is white on the inside. Uh, just everybody has electric showers and stuff like that. There's only a few places I've seen that have that new modern development. Coming from Sao Paulo, this city is uh, very run down and a lot dirtier. Not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, if you consider being dirty a good thing, I mean, yeah. But I'm not saying in a negative way because I've been to places like this before. I'm just making a direct comparison. It is a lot more run down and there was a not only a culture shock, but it was a shock looking at the architecture and the way how the roads are designed, which are complete hell. You can't even walk places really around here. It's not really a walkable city. Uh, in Sao Paulo, you could pretty much walk to every necessity you needed, like the gym, the supermarket, I like cigars, all that stuff was within 15 to 20 minutes by foot. Uh, here, yeah, walking to the mall and then walking to the gym after that, that sounds like a 20 minute walk per piece. So you'll be walking 40 minutes just to do those two things. When in Sao Paulo, I could do that in 15 minutes. So huge difference there. The Airbnbs are not that expensive, uh, kind of. I mean, I think I paid about $500 for two weeks here, which is nearly as much as it is in Sao Paulo, but it's not the same. And it's in a good part of the city if you have a car. Like, even the nearest gas station or convenience store is literally 15 minutes by foot, which that doesn't sound like too much. But again, when I was in Sao Paulo, Buenos Aires, places like that, there's... It's so convenient. I can walk downstairs and the minute I walk outside of my apartments, literally in 10 seconds, I can be at the supermarket versus 15 minutes here. Uh, so there's a huge difference with that. There's not a lot of amenities. Don't don't come here looking for modern stuff. It's here, but it's not like a lot of places I've been to where everything is like you walk in a room, you're like, oh, it looks like the United States in here. And this this is like a US grade apartment or a European grade apartment. No. Places like Thailand, uh, Nairobi, Kenya, yeah, places like that, they're gonna have Buenos Aires, they're gonna have stuff like that, but not really here. I would say it's good for the price, uh, considering the fact that your average meal here is gonna be like ten bucks. 15 bucks tops. If you spend more than that, you went to a place where you knew you were going to spend more money than that. 
you can eat at, you can eat at the mall for about the same price that you would in Sao Paulo, which is about ten to fifteen bucks, which is expensive for a mall because you could do it in other places in Latin America for seven or eight bucks, like Paraguay, like Bolivia, places like that. It could be even cheaper. The Ubers are a lot cheaper than Sao Paulo. If you wanted to save money, this would be a great city, but there's a trade-off to everything. You're not going to be able to do a lot, but you'll be able to save money. Uh, the vibe that I got from this neighborhood that I stayed in, which is Adrianopolis, was a very local vibe. It's not, it doesn't, I'm, I'm thinking this is similar to a tour zone, but it's not the uh, tour zone. It doesn't look like it. It just looks like you're living amongst the locals. You come here if you really want to live like you're living in Brazil as a local Brazilian. It's not like Sao Paulo where you can get that same level of, you know, back home in the States. You really got to feel like a Brazilian here. Safety. I've been told that it's very unsafe in Manaus and it's easy to get robbed. I've walked around these streets late at night. And I didn't even feel one time in danger, like literally dark streets by myself. I don't feel like the women are going to drug me or rob me here, which that doesn't matter anyway, because the door is locked on the inside. So if I don't know somebody, I like I like everybody inside with me so that way they can't leave without me. You know, that's just for my own safety. The same way they had me protect themselves, I protect myself. But I never felt as a man, I never felt in danger. Not one time. But I heard it's dangerous, so if you come here, consider that. But in my opinion, you don't have anything to worry about. But a lot of places I go to, I don't feel, really feel like I have anything to worry about. Except you have a problem. The safety issue you might have is dogs. Stray, aggressive dogs are a real problem here in Manaus. I've been chased down the street. I've been chased in public uh, by stray dogs. That's a problem here for some reason. I don't know what's up with these dogs around here. You can ride a motorcycle here in Manaus like you cannot in Sao Paulo. The motorcycles are a lot cheaper. You can get most places around the city for less than five bucks on average, like a dollar or two at best. Uh, so you can save money by doing that. Of course, there's a trade off where you can fall off the motorcycle and probably lose your neck. But you are a lot. You are saving a lot more money by using the motorcycles and you use Uber and other apps that you would use in Brazil for ride sharing. But like I said before, the way how the roads are designed, it takes a lot longer to get places in Manaus than it should. A place that should take you five minutes will take you literally 20 minutes just because they have the roads designed the way how, like I said, the way they built this in the Amazon River, in the jungle, and it, the way how they design the streets looks like the way how water would flow through a river. Look at the map when you get a chance. Look at how the streets are like this. Everywhere you got to make a U-turn. You can't even just cross the street. Everywhere you got to make a U-turn. This street goes like this and intersects with that one. It's a complete mess. I don't know who designed this. There are a lot of Western style restaurants. It's not a lot of fancy stuff here. Uh, so if you're looking for fancy stuff, don't come to my house. It's here. But it's not like whenever I was in Asuncion or it's not like when I was in Bolivia where it's a lot of fancy places you can go to. Uh, that It's just not there. Lima has a lot of nice fancy places. You know, a lot of fancy places in those places I just named down here. Tourist attractions. I'm going to let you guys know right now, outside of the Amazon River, that's it. Not many other tourist attractions. Like they have like the theater in the Amazon. Like that was cool. But... Would you lose sleep at night if you didn't see that? No. You wouldn't lose any sleep at night. Now, the Amazon rainforest, yes. If I left here without seeing that, I would feel like I fucked up. But that theater, no. The market, you know, near the the docks, didn't need to. It was good to see it. Not a big deal. So, like I said, if you guys come here, the only tourist attraction that you need to see, really, is the Amazon rainforest. Nightlife here is great. Uh, the ratios are really like 80% women to 20% men. Uh, I, one thing I did notice is the women are very dry until the drinks kick in. And that might sound like, oh, well, duh. I'm telling you, there's places around the world where the women don't even need alcohol and they just socialize. But I noticed when I was here in Manaus, I would get to a club at like 11 p.m. The chicks would be drinking. They would have to drink. They, they would almost have to be drunk before they actually start conversing when you talk to them. Before, they're just kind of, oh, like, what's your name? 
you ask them what's their name. Like, oh, yeah, my name is so-and-so. Then they go back on their phone. But then when the drinks kick in around 1, 2 a.m., now they're super nice and talkative. In my opinion, honestly, I'd rather go meet women at the mall or online. The nightlife is good. I've, I've done a lot of, I've done some take-homes. You know, I've done some, ta- I've had some success. I don't know why it is whenever you guys hear me give a, a, a not so positive opinion about a subject you think that I'm losing. Well, that's probably just because you're an idiot. But I have success in these things I'm talking about. It's just, I've been to so many places I can compare and contrast now. And I can tell you, mm, nightlife is good. Wouldn't lose any sleep if I didn't do it. But there are a lot of women when you go out at nightlife. So keep that in mind. The people here are a lot warmer, a lot friendlier. Uh, the women here are more, they're beautiful in their own way. They have that Pocahontas look. They have that, or some of them just had that Native American look in general. Not so much Pocahontas, but they had the Native American look. And I'm going to tell you guys, I had the best action I've ever had. At least top three around the world here in Manaus. Yesterday. Very good. Very sweet women to go on dates with. They're not boring when you're on a date with them. Uh, there's no problems. You know, there's usually not too many like, oh, you know, let's not go home. Like, it's not really too much. They're pretty much very open minded. So it's the, the, the boringness of the city does balance out if you're a single man with the dating. And of course, if you have a girlfriend, maybe so, you know, but the dating will definitely balance out how boring the city is. You have to have that because it can't be boring and the dating sucks. Then nobody would like it at all here. But it does balance out. And I can see why some people would come here. But most of you guys are going to hear that like, oh, Austin said the dating was good in Manaus. You're not going to stay here. It's, it's, if, you had to, if I had to pick between Sao Paulo and Manaus, I probably would go back to Sao Paulo and deal with a tougher dating market. Just because I know I can go to nice rooftops and never really... You know, I would just get a girlfriend if I went there. So there's a trade-off. There's a trade-off to all this stuff, man. If I go back to Sao Paulo, I got to get a girlfriend. If I go here, if I stay in Manaus, I can stay single, but it's not really going to be too much to do. And there's not a lot of expats here, right? So the minute your friends leave, like Casey and Patrick I've been hanging out with, the minute they leave and I'm here by myself, oh, no. No, now, because now I don't have any, you know, no, you definitely need some American expat friends in a city like this. Otherwise, yeah, it's not going to be, it's not going to be as enjoyable. People can say, get local men, local men. I'm telling you, you need American expat friends. Trust me. Now, I didn't really notice any too, too much of a difference in the cultural norms. Uh, it's pretty much like the regular Brazilians, like they kiss very fast. You know, the women are very sweet. If they're interested, they're super interested when they meet you. You know, everybody speaks. Nobody's very cold. That was only Sao Paulo where I noticed a very, very contrasting cultural norm and how they did things like in Sao Paulo it was odd to approach a woman on the street and speak to her she'd be like oh like what the fuck are you doing you know that's really I only noticed that really in Sao Paulo you know what I mean so no problem meeting people uh I found it great to meet people in person but the majority of my interactions happen online the majority happen online The quality of the conversations were great. The chicks were entertaining, like I told you before, very intelligent. And being a foreigner here in Manaus does not mean they roll out the red carpet, but not that far from it, right? Like they're not gonna be like, oh, an American, I need to sell my soul. They're not doing that. But they're just like, oh, really? That's maybe I should talk to you. You know, they kind of have like that mindset. I've been places where being an American or a foreigner in general literally just sealed the deal. That was all you need to do is say you were a foreigner. This is not one of those places, but I will say it does help in my opinion. (sighs) Dating dynamics. Overall, the dating experience, if 10 was the best, like Salvador Bahia for me, that was a 10, I would give this place an 8 or even an 8.5. It was not that far off. But a little bit of a variety would be better because it's really just the Pocahontas chicks here. 
And that's not really a problem. It's not really a problem at all. But if if we could have more white, more black chicks, was that 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 is here, but it's just not the majority from what I'm seeing. Not really a big deal, not a deal breaker. Just I've been so many places I literally will fine tune critique each place I go to. So would I recommend you guys date in Manaus? Yes, but just know that you will be bored as hell here. And they have but the women do have a lot of respect. I think you can live in Manaus for around twelve hundred dollars a month. If you got an apartment here and you grocery shop and you rode on motorcycles everywhere, twelve hundred dollars would be more than enough money to come live in Manaus. Overall, I would say that Manaus is hot as hell. It's uh, boring, but the women are very beautiful and the people are very friendly and the food is very good and it's very cheap to be here. And if you really enjoy nature and humidity uh, like I do, this is the place to be. If you smoke cigars, please bring your own cigars before you come here because they literally only have cigars like this, which is the one that they make in Bahia. You guys, Salvador Bahia, Brazil. And it's like, all right, like I would never even recommend you smoke this cigar. I would only recommend it if you got stuck here. So you need to import your own, like you need to go to a cigar, reach, look at a cigar shop in Sao Paulo and ask them to mail you some here. Because yeah, no, the, the cigars that they have here are no go, which is good. You know, I've been able to take a break from smoking, but I don't want to take a break. I don't need to, but I was forced to here. So. Would I ever return to Manaus? Overall, I give the city a eight. I would I give the dating a eight and a half, and I would give the city no 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 no. I give the dating a eight and a half, and I give the city a five. I give it a five just because it's it's not a lot to do. So a five and an eight and a half, I probably would rate the city altogether at a seven which is not bad, C, C minus, you know. Would I come back? Yes, I would come back. I don't know when that would be. <laughs> I don't know why I would come back. I would come back if I wanted to get away from other Americans for some reason, and that only lasts so long. That only lasts so long. Or if I had a girlfriend here or something like that. But just like, oh, let me move from the United States and go live in Manaus. No, I can live here part time. Like, oh, I'll be in Manaus two months out of the year. OK, that's fine. But living here 12 months out of the year. Absolutely not. So let me know what you guys think. If you've been in Manaus, give me your opinion below. I would love to hear it. Uh, let me know what video you'd love to see me make next. I hope you guys are enjoying these pre-recorded videos because it is direct to the information. We might slow down on the live streams. You guys are still donating to the Cash App, just like a live stream. You know, and people are actually, the, these do better than live streams because people, they're shorter. So they're more likely to be shared more than a eight hour live stream so we're definitely going to limit how many of those we do and it's easier i've been talking now for 18 minutes it's easier for me to pop this out and say it in one breath and upload it you know i could do this seven times a day or more if i really wanted to let me know what you guys think and uh yes we will get back to more controversial topics if you guys found that informative and it made you Want to come to Manaus? Not want to go to Manaus? If you want to come to Manaus, there will be a dating in Manaus guide below. And there will be a travel guide that is already tagged below as well. Pick them up if you want to save yourself some time. I go into full detail on what my experience was like here and how you can save money, time, and energy dating and being in Manaus. I did the hard work for you. Click below. It's the best way to support your boy. Or you can send a cash app at dollar sign. Austin Hollywood. Thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you guys next time.